What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be taking a look at this. This is an NVIDIA GTX 750 Ti. Now we've recently taken a look at its little brother, the 750, and we were actually quite surprised with the performance of it. Obviously it's not a card that you want to be buying in 2022, particularly if you're trying to play some new AAA games. But we wanted to know if the Ti version would actually make much of a difference. Now it took us a while to actually get this card because of the GPU crisis and all the prices were pretty crazy. But recently somebody actually donated this one to the channel. So obviously we wanted to get it on the test bench and see what it could do. Okay, so the model that was given to us is an Asus version. It's actually got a twin cooler system, which works superbly well. It's a two gigabyte card and it does require an extra power connection. It's just a standard six pin here. Although they kind of put it in the wrong place because usually on cards it's at the back here, but for some reason they put it at the front. So it makes it really hard to actually hide the cable. The reason they did this probably is because when it was actually released, you weren't having the kind of cases that we have now and the aesthetics that people like to do, but it doesn't actually cause a problem, particularly if you want to just vertically mount it, if you wanted to bother doing that, because obviously the cable would be hidden behind. Specification wise, we'll put something up on the screen so that you can see what it actually has. And it is a bit of a boost over the 750 itself. But when this card actually came to us, it wasn't in that great a shape. It was actually absolutely covered in dust all the way through and it had some kind of thermal issues. So we tore it apart and we started to give it a clean up. We managed to get all the dust out, clean up all the fans and also reapply the thermal paste. After that, it was actually a really good card. There was no thermal issues and it's really, really cool all the way through. I put that down to the actual dual fan configuration on this. If you look at some of the other models, they actually come with singles because the card isn't that powerful. It doesn't really need a lot, but if you are running a single fan, it's gonna be spinning very quick. So you're gonna have a bit of noise. This one is actually super quiet. It's super cool, particularly after we did the cleanup and we were completely shocked with the performance. Talking about performance, obviously you've come to see the benchmarks. Now for the benchmarks, we decided to actually test this graphics card against AAA titles that are reasonably modern over the last two or three years to see if it was actually perform well. Now, unfortunately, those games we couldn't run in 1080p high, so we actually run them in 1080p low, which gave us a surprising set of results. But instead of us talking through it, let's take a look at what we got.
as you can see from those results, it actually performed really well. We managed to play all of those games perfectly fine with very little stuttering, although it did suffer a little bit in performance terms in terms of FPS. For most of the games, we nearly reached that magic 60 frames per second number, although we actually did on Resident Evil 7. We actually managed to get around a 67 average on that one, which meant it was actually more than playable. Now, considering we actually played them on low settings, you're not going to get that good of a graphical experience, but they are more than playable. But considering they were single player games, you could probably get away with just playing them at 30 FPS. So if you actually put a bit of a limit on your frames per second, you'd probably get a better experience all the way through. Now, we know this card is actually more powerful than its little brother, the 750. And recently we tested that one against some esports titles and it did really well. So there was no question that this card could actually play them. So instead of going down the grade, we actually decided to go up and test it against one of the most demanding games on the market. Yes, that's right. That game is Cyberpunk 2077. Now, I'm not a big Cyberpunk player, but I do know that a lot of the graphics cards I've tested against really do struggle. In particular, this one did too. When outside of Night City in 1080p low, we really struggled to actually get anything higher than 27 frames per second. And that wasn't a very good playable experience because it was really stuttery and really jumpy all over. You, you're not really going to be able to play it. When we actually got inside Night City, it was pretty much impossible to play at those settings. It just would not perform at all. So what we had to do was actually enable AMD FSR. Yes, AMD FSR is actually supported by this card, even though they don't officially say, and we did actually manage to see an increase in performance. Now that performance still doesn't make the game very playable, but it meant that even inside Night City, we managed to get a 29 frames per second, which some consider as playable. Although the quality is very, very deteriorated at this, and you probably won't want to play it. So all in all, how well do we think this card performed? As a card, it actually performed quite well, particularly if you're going to be playing old games or esports titles. You're not going to get away with playing some of the more high demanding games that have recently been released. But that depends on how much you're actually going to pay for it. We were really impressed with it and for the right price, it would actually be worth buying. Now, I wouldn't pay anything over about £40 for this card purely because of the limitations you've got. But if you can get one for free, just like we did, obviously it's a great purchase, particularly to put in one of those older systems where you don't need that much power, but you do want to turn it into a bit of a gaming PC. But anyway, that's our look at the GTX 750 Ti. We finally managed to get one in and we're quite impressed with it. Make sure you drop a comment below if you've got one of these cards and let us know of the experiences you have or is it even worth bothering with anymore, particularly on the games that you play. Don't forget to let us know in those comments as well what types of games you play and maybe we can give it another try. Just give it another try against something that it actually performs really well against. Make sure you like this video if you like the kind of content and we'll catch you in the next one.